Some Super Bowl commercials in 2024 cleverly subverted celebrity personalities, while others presented audiences with a terrifying vision of the future. Here are the best and worst of the big game's ads. The concept of Beyonce starring in a Verizon commercial about trying to break the internet isn't exactly reaching any new creative heights. Still, it's hard to deny her endless reserves of charisma, which remains compelling even when she's shilling for a huge corporation and making obvious jokes about opening a lemonade stand. What really makes this ad memorable, though, is that it pairs Beyonce with perhaps the least likely co-star imaginable. Tony Hale. Who knew that pairing the guy best known as the bumbling Buster Bluth and bodyman Gary Walsh with one of the most beloved pop stars on the planet could work under any circumstances, let alone a Super Bowl ad? Hale gets to show off his natural comic chops by reacting to Beyonce's grand achievements, and he turns out to be the perfect everyman foil for such a larger-than-life icon. The premise for this might have been nothing special on paper, but letting two great performers play to their particular strengths lands its heads and shoulders above the rest of the crop. Chris Pratt's bizarre career trajectory continued unabated with a Super Bowl commercial for Pringles. It featured the Guardians of the Galaxy star sporting a new curly mustache, which leads to everyone around the world claiming that he looks like the Pringles guy. The ad mostly just features him standing around, reacting with a vacant facial expression. To put it bluntly, the handful of sight gags in this promo have been done much better in other places. The weirdest part, though, is how this ad doesn't really offer much to justify its existence. It's not promoting a new flavor of Pringles or anything like that. Instead, it's just a reminder that a brand that people are already very familiar with still exists. And just as bad, it's another example of utilizing Pratt as a blank slate straight man rather than leaning into his considerable comic sensibilities. Initially, State Farm's 2024 Super Bowl commercial looked like it was going to run an old idea into the ground. Legendary action star Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying to be an insurance spokesperson, but his famous Austrian accent makes it difficult for him to convincingly say the word neighbor. That's what I said, neighbor. It's not exactly a groundbreaking observation that certain words sound odd coming out of Schwarzenegger's mouth. It's a pretty common gag in his movies, after all. But then the commercial takes a welcome final turn in its closing moments. At the premiere of Schwarzenegger's State Farm commercial within the commercial, it's revealed that his twins co-star, Danny DeVito, is now performing alongside him, and he's the one who gets to say the Like a Good Neighbor slogan. This may have just been a cheap ploy playing on the culture's collective love for a certain classic comedy, but DeVito is a welcome presence in any setting. He's one of those singular entertainers who can instantly elevate a Super Bowl ad from middling to stratospheric. Jeff Goldblum has made a career out of playing an endless supply of quirky characters, so it's not exactly a surprise that he's been shilling for apartments.com. The 2024 Super Bowl edition of this campaign featured a splashy expansion of his tenure as the fictional Brad Bellflower, as he interrupts an exchange between military personnel and a couple of massive aliens. The meeting is initially contentious, but Bellflower's knowledge about apartments makes the aliens feel welcome in our galaxy. This is obviously a nod to Goldblum's role in the Independence Day films, where he dealt with slightly more vicious otherworldly visitors. Leaning so heavily on a decades-old movie without coming up with anything new to say makes this ad pretty lackluster. It's all just a nostalgia grab. Plus, the forgettable designs of the aliens undercut the potential spectacle. Ultimately, bringing Mr. Bellflower into the domain of science fiction doesn't make for a good commercial, nor does it make a convincing argument for why Goldblum has been doing these ads for nearly a decade. Ben Affleck is already known as a high-profile Dunkin' Donuts spokesperson, but he really took it to the next level in this big game spot. The coffee and donut chains ad featured him spitting a Dunkin'-themed rap for his partner Jennifer Lopez. This concept is hardly breaking new ground, as Super Bowl commercials have been poking fun at Boston-based celebrities and their accents for years now. Look who's got Smart Pack! Smart Pack? Nevertheless, Affleck's commitment to delivering this wacky material with a straight face is shockingly entertaining. His recent performances in movies like The Last Duel and Air prove that he can really shine when he's allowed to let loose as much as possible. And these Duncan ads have only proven that point further. But the real standout of this commercial has to be Affleck's buddy Matt Damon. His belated line delivery, followed by a hasty apology to Lopez, is just terrifically funny, and it makes for the perfect contrast to Affleck's unabashed enthusiasm. Affleck and Damon have always been a great combo in movies like Goodwill Hunting and Dogma, and this might just be one of the best examples of their partnership ever. How do you like them, Matt? 
Bizarrely enough, gambling company FanDuel cannot technically claim to be one of the last acting credits of Carl Weathers. Their Super Bowl ad featured the legendary actor among a slew of people reacting to a kick from retired NFL star Rob Gronkowski. In the wake of Weathers' passing at the age of 76 on February 1st, some on-screen text was added at the end to pay tribute to him. While it's nice that FanDuel tipped their hat to a legend, this ad is basically incomprehensible if you haven't watched the previous chapters in this campaign. It also feels extra insulting for a company that's currently in the middle of fraud-based lawsuits to wring sentimental points by playing on the death of a beloved actor. Weathers deserved better than being associated with a gambling company in one of his final on-screen performances. This ad would have been a poorly crafted concoction no matter what. But tragic real-world circumstances conspired to make it feel even more off-putting. Volkswagen's 2024 Super Bowl ad gets off on the right foot with a flashback to the early 20th century. Tight 4-3 framing and black-and-white cinematography don't automatically turn a commercial into a piece of art. But those are distinctive visual choices that immediately separate this ad from the rest of the big game pack. Plus, that aspect ratio offers an interesting perspective in the starting moments that depict Volkswagen's early days. Then a montage takes viewers through various decades of Volkswagen-related material. This includes a cute clip from the company's Darth Vader commercial from the 2011 Super Bowl and a bit from The Simpsons, in which Bart punches Lisa and yells out, Punch Buggy. Overall, this ad makes a fine case for just how much Volkswagen deserves its prominent place in car culture. And for some icing on top, it concludes with some on-screen text that emphasizes how much Volkswagen drivers bring the soul of this company to life. Plus, setting it all to the tune of the Neil Diamond song, I Am, I Said, is an inspired touch. Most Super Bowl car commercials commercials are largely disposable, but Volkswagen took a big swing that really paid off. When it comes to the lowest of lows of 2024 Super Bowl commercials that didn't involve politics, it had to be Microsoft Copilot, an AI chatbot utilizing the tech company's Cortana software. This ad didn't initially let on that it was about artificial intelligence, as it instead began with a group of people from disadvantaged backgrounds accompanied with text about the ways that other people underestimate them. Morning. These underdogs then use Copilot to achieve their dream and create the kind of supposedly amazing art that only AI can create. The commercial is already a dreadful experience simply because the act of utilizing AI isn't very visually engaging. It could have been relatively harmless if it built up to a cathartic moment of beating the odds, but instead, it all culminates in strings of text, an assortment of terrible-looking images for potential storyboards, and other underwhelming images that only AI could produce. Meanwhile, Microsoft positioning Copilot as a savior for people with limited resources and external forces keeping them down comes off as incredibly dystopian. Other tech ads typically imply that a new laptop or phone will make you cooler, as opposed to being the entire mechanism through which you can achieve your dreams. Simply put, who would want to live in a world where only Microsoft's Copilot can save us? One disappointing trend among the 2024 Super Bowl commercials is how many of them featured celebrities offering predictable renditions of their well-known star personas. So it was a lovely departure from the norm to see Michael Cera as the new face of the skincare brand CeraVe, although perhaps it wasn't entirely unpredictable. So my name is Sarah, and so there's it's perfect crossover opportunity. As Sarah tries to pass himself off as a confident male model full of bravado, he's a long way away from George Michael Bluth or Barbie's friend Alan. Nevertheless, he nails exactly what he's asked to do here. This ad also effectively mimics the visual style of typical overblown skincare commercials. That attention to detail is especially funny when juxtaposed with a spokesperson who doesn't seem like a natural fit for CeraVe products. Ending things on a meta note with a star trying to sell the commercial to unenthusiastic executives could have been too obvious, but Sarah's killer timing allows him to sell the truly unsellable. While other celebrities seem to be going through the motions this year, Michael Sarah stepped outside of his comfort zone and showed them all how it's really done.